Now then, my name is Ryan Central and we have another hotfix today. We actually have a lot of news to go over, both with the hotfix, but I was also saving up a bit of news to do with Zane and how a good amount of visibilities and arguments just didn't work. Bit more of an update on that because they fixed it. It wasn't in the patch notes though, but I wanted to start with the hotfixes. Each of the Vault Hunters got changed, ones in bigger deals than others, but I wanted to start with Flak. Flak last week had Leave No Trace nerfed. They added a re-trigger delay at about one second and this was a talent when you scored a critical hit there was a chance for one ammo to be added to your magazine this was something that i glossed over in the last video because i didn't really see the impact but it was a major nerf to flak the clunkiness of the guns being used in fadeaway was a lot less and it generally made playing flak a lot worse he was still very very strong but he just didn't feel as fun to play like i said he felt very clunky he spent most of your time in fadeaway reloading with some of the guns so that was really annoying i mentioned that is because they've reverted the change somewhat leave no trace now has a re-trigger delay set to 0.3 seconds from one the leave no trace changed last week to flak was to forcefully inject the functionality of a cooldown into the ability however the value that was added was never the intended value we dramatically lowered it to retain the promise of an ability but with a cooldown that still allows players to gain ammo without dramatically removing a core aspect of weapons gameplay loop so it's nice that they heard what the community was saying about this change. Like I said in the video, I glossed over it because there were a couple of other different flak buffs in that patch. That was like, oh, these are cool. You know, buffs to the pets and to the rack attack. But the Leaf No Trace nerf was a lot bigger than I anticipated. And I didn't really see the impact of just a very early talent that you can get as flak. But this is great news if you play him. You actually get a buff, which I guess is nice when they've gone on this tirade of just nerfing Flak over and over again. This is them turning around and going, okay, we're holding our hands up and saying, we went a bit too far, we're going to revert some of the stuff. So really good if you're a Flak player. And it's a similar story for Moe's, although there's a bit more to deal with here. The Bloodlighter class mod for Moe's, if Moe's would be healed, she gains shields instead. If she would regenerate health, she also gains shield regeneration. This was a class mod built around the whole idea of you want to have as little health as Moe's as possible possible even going down to one health with a shield amount of about 40,000 like you're seeing on screen. This is a build that was very strong because it was the idea of increasing your gun damage the lower your health was and because of that you could melt stuff as modes. There was also ways to I guess exploit it in a way that you wouldn't even get close to losing your shield that it would just constantly keep regenerating at a pretty incredible rate. Because of that the class mod has been changed a little bit. They've reduced the recharge rate by 50% but they have increased the recharge delay by 150% too. So they've reduced the rate at which your shields recharge from zero to whatever by 50%, so it's a lot slower, and increased the recharge delay by 150%, which I believe is that it takes longer from when your shield depletes to when it will start recharging again. So both of these are nerfs. They also addressed a reported bug with closer distance, so the action skill augment will now deal the intended shock damage. This is the bare fist augment. Instead of punching, bare fist now launches its fists forwards and grabs enemies at greatly increased range, dealing shock damage and pulling them back to Iron Bear. This was a augment that was very, very weak, probably the weakest of all of Moses' augments and also weapons. The bare fist is just not very good. So it wasn't working as intended, so they fixed it. But then... The means of destruction now has a re-trigger delay of 0.3 seconds. Similar to Flak, this was nerfed last week. Means of destruction, whenever Moa's deals splash damage, there is a chance to add ammo to her currently equipped weapon magazine with a smaller chance to return a grenade. This would enable this infinite grenade build that you've seen a lot of people highlight. Last week, they added a re-trigger delay so it wouldn't keep spamming over and over again, but they increased it to one second now they've reverted it somewhat to 0.3. The Bloodlighter class mod was creating some overwhelming synergies for Moe's, so we increased the delay and decreased the recharge rate of the shield to compensate. This should help encourage the intended use of this class mod, which is to heal shields manually, not automatically. Means of Destruction's re-trigger delay was adjusted again because the change limited other builds beyond creating infinite grenades. This infinite grenade bug will be addressed in a future patch, but we wanted to enable other builds that use Means of Destruction's, so we dramatically reduced the re-trigger delay to a reasonable number so they're basically saying here that they wanted to stop this infinite grenade build but this nerf that they put in last week made it so a lot of other different legitimate builds i suppose for Moe's were a lot weaker too so they've reduced it they're going to do something else about the infinite grenade build so get as much use out of it as you possibly can it's nice to see them going back on some of the changes but unlike last week amara and Sena are also on this list of getting changes 
For Marish, he has two changes. Putting points into Alacrity now awards a reload speed bonus per rank, and Phase Grasp can now be used on targets further away, and the cooldown is now instantly returned if a player misses. Alacrity is a talent, and Marish gains increased reload speed from every stack of Rush. After consuming Rush stacks, the bonus is increased for a few seconds. And the Phase Grasp change is pretty self-explanatory. This is what Gearbox had to say. We addressed the concern that Alacrity was only rewarding players one point worth of bonuses, even if the player put in more than one point. In addition, we wanted Phase Grasp to be more accessible to all weapon types and playstyles, so we doubled the range to grasp an enemy. Fairly straightforward. And it's nice to hear them go, oh yep, some of the stuff on Amara wasn't working, so we fixed it. However, we then come to Zane, who only has one change. Death Follows Close will correctly update several kill skills after unlocking this ability. Death Follows Close, all of Zane's kill skills gain increased effect and duration. I guess the duration part of that wasn't actually working with some of the kill skills. But that goes into the big Zane section of this video. Last week, we went over the fact that a good amount of his augments and weapons just didn't work, or at least didn't work as intended. Abilities and talents such as Double Barrel, Confident Competence, Digital Distribution, wasn't working at all. And there was a big post that came out of Infogreen about this, going over each of the changes. A lot of you have been asking me all week about this and basically saying, hey Ryan, what's up? Have Gearbox said anything? They didn't even put it in the patch notes, but last week, apparently the majority of these were fixed. In fact, it was fixed in the hotfix video that we did last. This came from Infogreen. This isn't necessarily a statement, so I am going to paraphrase it a little bit. But they said that the latest patch seems to have gutted the post. Everything that they retested, double barrel, confident competence, digital distribution, everything is coming up fixed. Looks like a bunch of these got ninja patched, maybe even all of them. The only one that's still a little bit iffy is Futility Belt, where you gain resistance to non-elemental damage. And after killing an enemy, all elemental damage Zane takes is converted to non-elemental damage. It doesn't synergize with Death Follows Close, which should increase the duration. That, of course, was fixed in this patch, though. But also, whilst Futility Belt does convert elemental damage to true normal damage, it doesn't do it in a resistible non-elemental way. I wanted to put this early into the video because a lot of you have been asking specifically, you know, what's happening? Has Gearbox said anything? Has it been fixed? And yeah, it's been fixed. Everything works as intended or at least better than it did before, but Gearbox haven't said anything on the subject at all. Whether they fixed it because it was a bug in the game and they happened to fix it by accident or not, or whether they did it on the sly, remains to be seen. I would hope that it's not the latter because I want them to be full frontal with all of the changes that they make. And if it's the case of what the characters doesn't work properly then they need to sort of tell people that the character that they're playing doesn't work properly you know i think that's a given do you feel the difference now that all of these abilities work it's a bit of a yes and no like you definitely feel that you're a lot stronger and you can kill stuff a lot quicker but it's not like that was holding him back he isn't now suddenly the best vault hunter in the game not by any stretch i think he's still the worst if i'm being honest but he's a lot stronger has a lot more utility it was more the minutiae of what made zane zane that wasn't working as intended but i would 100% say that these changes haven't impacted him in such a way that he is now the best Vault Hunter. If you've been waiting to play Zane for a time where he's a little bit better and not as weak, then now is very much a good time to try and play him. He is a lot of fun. He's certainly one of my favourite ones in how fast and quick and how much damage you can do in a mobbing scenario. It's still pretty good, but he's not the best. I think that title still belongs to Amara with the builds that you can run with her. All of her skill trees are very good in certain situations. Her class mods really express that too. And also she has the best anointment weapons. You know, using Phase Slam to get 200% to 300% weapon or melee damage increase is ridiculous. I don't understand why nobody else has that sort of power, especially going into the takedowns and the raid bosses in the future. Amara's going to be so far ahead of everybody else, I feel. But there are more changes that we haven't gone over yet that we will go over now. Some hot fixes to do with increasing the strength of legendaries. Gearbox even put that in the sort of opening statement saying they wanted to increase the strength of some of the legendaries that aren't very good right now. So we'll go over them and also some changes to anointed gear for Zane, Flak, and then everyone. The lob, which is a legendary weapon, has projectile tick damage, which is now 60% of the base damage up from 20, so it's been tripled. And the projectile speed deaccelerates faster to increase chance of hitting the same target multiple times. Creeping death damage increased by 200%. That's good because the creeping death legendary was god awful. It was one that we highlighted in the video last week and it's a brand new legendary. It just felt like it didn't do an awful lot of damage. So a little bit of gameplay on screen if you haven't seen it before. Now that's going to be a hell of a lot stronger. The carrier damage has also been increased by 60% and the gunnerang has had its increased damage 20% too. 
All sniper rifles have been nerfed a little bit, I guess, with their zim levels been slightly reduced, meaning that you can't see as far, with long scopes on Jacobs, Children of the Vault, and Doll Assault Rifles also been slightly reduced. This is interesting when it comes to anointed parts, like I said about Zane. When Zane swaps positions with his Digi-Clone, the damage used to be increased from 75% with some anointed bits of gear, now it's increased to 130, which is a pretty strong thing. Flak also got a buff with his anointed parts that he can get. When Flak hits the target, it used to be that the target now takes 50% increased damage. With the racks, now it takes 100%. And finally, this applies to everybody. The anointed part increased damage versus badasses no longer heals the player and now correctly adds bonus damage to badass enemies. How that happens, I have no idea. It seems a good portion of the stuff that they added into this game just doesn't fix and they weren't really shown how to test it, I guess. Bug fixes, Pain, Terror and Agonizer 9000 have been adjusted to have increased chance to drop higher quality loot, which is good because Pain and Terror don't have a unique drop from them, so it would be nice to have them like Tron or Grave Ward where you can farm them for better world drops, basically. I addressed a reported bug with Dynasty Diner that could potentially half mission progress for some players. I addressed a report concern that some players fell through the floor in various boss arenas. That has happened quite a few times. And I've also modified enemy spawn level discrepancies reported in a later part of the campaign. They also put, we noticed that some enemies were spawning at lower levels than expected in the later parts of the campaign. Players should no longer see enemies at a drastically lower level than other nearby enemies in certain areas. So it's some pretty good stuff in there. It's not a major patch, it's bigger than last week, but it wasn't as big as the week before. But I really like these changes. Last week it was kind of like a, ugh, not really too much major. And some pretty hefty nerfs coming to Mose and Flak. But it's nice that they've reverted those in capacity. Zane, as I mentioned, I don't know why they didn't say anything about it in the patch notes or online anywhere. Amara's had a nice little buff, but to be honest, she didn't really need it. It's just a nice quality of life thing. She's still, in my eyes, one of the better options to be running. But that's everything that I wanted to go over today. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think of this patch. I will have a couple of videos probably going over the legendary changes, whether those legendaries are worth getting now. Creeping Death especially should be a lot stronger. I'm quite excited to see how that ends up. But thanks for watching. Take care. See you very soon.